Hello folks and welcome back to Trilby's Notes. So, uh, the guy is, is basically refused so the exit of the bar and go to the dining room. Mm -hmm. Open door. Go left to the dining room. Uh, head for the double doors to the left into the kitchen. Yep. And I'm gonna head back through the back door to the basement. Oh yeah, of course he wants us to bring him a drink. Open door. And there's a wine. Pick up, take what all. Take wine. Perhaps this would appease the drunken professor upstairs. Go back to the bar, and then go between the drawers until you shift into the alternate, alternate hotel. Oh, well that was convenient. So we're already there. Just go back to the bar then. Open door. Uh, what minute? Should we? Should I have taken a pill at some point? Uh, it just says take bottle. <coughs> go, oh, go back to the bar. Go in between rooms and take your to head over to the professor. Take head. So you need to go back out. Okay. Um, it just okay, so head over to the um, yeah, you might have to take a pill and go back in. And go back into the bar. But where's he gone now? And it says go between rooms until you find you know, get back to the rooms. So keep yep. going, come back up there, go back in there. Okay, open door. Head over to the oh professor. God. He Take shifted. It. Yeah. Yeah, we porcelain head. Yeah. Remember the porcelain thingy at the top of the stairs? Oh yeah. Take head. Use pills and exit bar. Uh took pull the head out of the sun, trying not to think about the wet cracking noise this caused. Use pill. Open door. And then uh, there's a leg, so take leg. Yep. Yeah. Take leg. Go to the door behind the counter. Use lock picks and door. Use lock picks. I think I had far stronger locks in my time. I picked it open within ten minutes. Open, open door. door. Take leg from the shelf. Take leg. Head back into the lobby and head out the entrance. Open door. Uh, open door. Take arm. Take arm. Take arm. Go to room 3C and take the arm of the bed. Regular hotel. Yep. And then after that, we need to find the evil hotel. Yeah, then go back to the ghost the, and then attach the limbs. Yeah. And use pills, help to fit. <coughs> oh. Have pills, porcelain arm, porcelain leg, leg, head, and wine. Oh, um. Cancel. Uh. Press tab to close. So if you go to free C Yeah. This hotel needs to install some lifts. Well, you remember the hotel well, hotel we both stayed in? Well the Premier Inn where we can go the stairs. Premier Inn which what we what, what was this? The, oh no, so you said I was on about the Premier Inn which you said you stayed in. Oh not the Premier Inn, no. Um, oh the the uh, the, the, the Hilton, I think. The Hilton Manchester. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah which has lifts but no stairs. Yeah. Open door. Well, it did technically has stairs, but you can't get to them unless it's an emergency. Take on. And then switch between us to get the evil hotel. Yeah. And then the proxy mannequin and attach the lifts. Yeah. Convenient. Yeah. Very. Um, 
Go to a mannequin. Attacks limbs. Arm, arm, leg, leg, head. Body's intact. For reasons I couldn't explain, I sense something had changed back in the real world. Yep. What kind of ridiculous locking mechanism is this? Um, well, it says use pills and go back to. F and then go to the third floor hallway. Mm -hmm. It is a ridiculous lock, though. It feels like, it feels like Resident Evil. Uh, which room? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Third floor hallway. Back, uh, back in the regular world, go back to the stairwell and head to the very top. Ah. It's oh, yeah, literally a locking system from what? Yeah. And then, it'll, and then go through that door. Open the door and head onto the roof. Open door. Take letter. Wait, um, you'll notice... Oh, uh, I was the welder just a bit, just for a bit there. You know, John Defoe. Yeah, I didn't really notice, but... Take... Take... Piss. <laughs> take... The... Take... A... Shit. I don't understand the word shit. Take... Take the letter. Take the letter. And here's the tree. Yep. Clan Bronwyn Island, Bromley Island, 1501. It's always July 28th, isn't it? A steady tree, this. It took us from dawn till dusk, but we have finally taken it. We finally have it down. I'm tired, Father. I've never seen such a gigantic oak, nor do I expect to again. But its wood shall keep us in the business of carpentry for years to come. Look at those stones. It matters not. Why must you always look everywhere but at what matters? This is your. Father? Something troubling you, Father. Um, um take stone, throw stone. stone. Throw stone. <laughs> what? Where am I? Must have shifted into the dark world during the vision. Trilby! Siobhan! Oh, good. I thought I was all alone. What happened to you? I don't know! The hotel's ruined. There's blood everywhere. And there's a ruined castle in the background. I saw this horrible man. Tall, thin, long black coat. You know him. Enough to know you're lucky to be alive. He didn't notice me, so I ran up here to hide. How do you get past the doll? What doll? Trilby, what's going on? I told you what would happen if you followed me into the shadows. This isn't your problem. Take these. What are these? Tranquilizer pills. I'll take one. When you calm down, the hotel will go back to normal. Won't I need them? I don't need to run away anymore. Trilby, wait. Where are you going? I know enough now. I know where the wood came from. Perhaps I can find a way to end this. Yes, but I think you've got one more flashback left to go. The, the curse wood claim from here, but what good does that knowledge do me? I never looked, got around to reading the letter I took from under the rock. <coughs> Very close to ending this, meet me in the basement, I'm going to show you my discovery. Lankman. The other page was another of the religious papers. Book of the Victims. Book, victim Page 1, one the, the Woodcutter. Wood the first of those against whom the prince sought vengeance was the Woodcutter. He who had held the axe that first felled the tree. The prince came to him and his son, and he struck the Woodcutter down, and the Woodcutter knew the name of the king. And the prince turned to the woodcutter's son, and he said, You I shall let live, for you are young, and you are of the innocent. And that you may go among your people and tell them of what I will wrought. And the woodcutter's son fled and told all of what he had seen. But the men of technology are arrogant, and his words were unheeded. Right, uh... So, we're going to go, go meet uh, Lankin, Lankman in the basement. It says, yeah, head to ground floor, head into the alternate hotel's kitchen. From there, head into the basement. Walk over to the hall, enter hall, and then touch stump. Yep. Yeah, and we won't need the pills anymore, which is just well because we don't have them. Our inventory contains precisely two things. Oh yeah, uh, drink, wine. 
Too much of a professional to drown in my sorrow. Just thinking that might have helped him relax enough to oh, you don't get out to. of the dark. I know you don't, but it just occurred to me that might be what would happen if you tried drinking. To the basement. To the basement. To the basement. To the gates, the gates, the gates, the man said. Yes. No. Open the door. Open door. Ah. Um. Uh, enter, enter hall. Yeah. Enter hall. Touch stump. Yep. And all of a sudden we're back in the normal. Oh, we're flickering. And here we are back in 55 BC on July the 28th. Kabadath, a Celtic druid, awaits the return of his friend and colleague Galden, who brings news of the invasion of Anglesey by the Roman Suetonus Paulinus. Having fallen out of favour with his fellows for certain radical beliefs and activities, Kabadath lives in solitude in this remote forest clearing and prefers not to travel himself. And here's Galden. You bring news? The foreigners have landed. They could not be deterred by our sorcery. All is lost. Oh, certain are you. They're, they're making their way across the land, eliminating resistance. Even you out here will grow it down within days. I'm sorry, Kabadath. Are the great druids of Anglesey bow easily to this brash foreign power? Do not hang your head yet, my friend. Perhaps the activities for which I was ostracized could yet spell an answer. What are you talking about? There exists some otherworldly territory populated by demons, creatures of magic... And that you could somehow commune with them. Come inside, I shall explain. What is this madness? In my dealings with the ethereal realm, I have learned of many powerful demons and elementals. But there's one spoken of only reluctantly, a beast possessing of awesome power. You plan to summon a demon? The most terrible of them all, who strikes fear into even the most unflappable creatures I've spoken with. A pain elemental. Indeed, on the only pain elemental. Ruler of a desolate wasteland where none venture. An invulnerable, hungry, potent beast that feeds on the agony of others. And today is his day. The day when he's bounding between realms weak and he glimpses our uh, And you want to summon this guy? Why exactly? <coughs> Bring through that point should be simple. Even if you could conjure it. How would you have it defend our land? I have knowledge. With the correct bindings, any demon could be forced to my will. I completed the preparations while I waited for you to come back. All that remains is the summoning. Maybe to see you build your hopes on nonsense. Be silent and watch. You shall see your nonsense soon enough. In this hall of death and by the light of... Uh, uh, I summon you. Bring you gifts to mark your path. I feed you with pain. I call you with madness. I summon you with the greatest loss. And I bind you to your true name. Chizo. Oh my god. That's exactly what I want to look like. I've reached out to you through the void. I command your true name. Show yourself. Show yourself. Yep, that's him. It's huge. It's larger than I anticipated. <laughs> but he must obey the rules of magic. He is bound, I can command it. Oops, never mind. No! It's far more powerful than I thought. Galden, help me. Nope, I'm out of here. No! Don't let it take me alive! Chizo, of course, has no use for meat. It feeds on pain, but it does not kill its prisoners. Kabadath's agony was a particularly rare morsel, and Chizo ensured it would last. His soul was placed inside an oak sapling on the site of his old home to grant his body immortality. For five centuries, as the tree grew, he knew torment beyond even his most depraved imaginings. But then, his, by then, his body was warped, and his mind long fallen into soulless dementia. He was Chizo, utterly and completely his slave. Ah. Will be. So on. Uh, I couldn't leave. I just. Abed's dead. I know. He was killed by the shadows. Just like they'll kill you if you don't get away from here. It says talk, jury, talk, judo, talk, book, move, punch man, kick man, look, look, coat, look man, look girl. Stump is what's causing it all. Ow. This is the vessel for the soul of the tall man. The acolyte of Chizo. 
Hello, Linkman. I see a friendly face. Amazing, isn't it? Of all the things Sir Roger could have used to murder his son, he chose that idol. Placing the soul of John Defoe into the wood alongside Kabadath. Infusing him with Chizou's magic, allowing him to come back infinitely more powerful than before. Certainly pretty lucky. Lucky? <coughs> Chizou had to wait 2,000 years for that. The opportunity to blend magic and science in a single entity. The opportunity to create the bridge. Yes. The bridge between the realms, of which Chizou will cross into our universe and purify mankind. Our order has waited 200 years for this prophecy to be fulfilled. You're not with the Ministry. Who are you? 200 years ago, the Prophet Jack Freehorn founded the Order of Blessed Agonies. Since then, we have grown, watched, and waited. Recent years that the events began to occur. We mentioned John Defoe. We mentioned you, Trilby. Yes, you were the one prophesied to guide the bridgekeeper to his destiny. But you didn't finish the job. All three aspects of John Defoe had to be destroyed to create the bridge. Body, mind, and soul. You destroyed his body. Had I known about this, I wouldn't even have done that. That will truly disappoint my superiors. They were quite adamant that I should try to persuade you to join our cause and fulfill your destiny. Is that why you're helping me? They thought if I guided you through your visions and showed you the appropriate passages, you'd understand the prophecy is real. You believe I'd join some insane cult because you handed me some leaflets? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've been stabbed. Uh... I fall unconscious. So, what am I doing? Talk, Jerry. Uh, barely move. We. Oh, good, you're awake. Afraid you'd miss this. What are you doing? After your staggering and aptitude in the foe manner, the order needs to nudge things along. We need a connection to Jello to help his coming. <coughs> Today might be the only opportunity we have to summon the tall man. With a standard ritual of blessed agonies and an offering. After he takes your life, he'll be grateful to us, and then it will guide us to our destiny. So why did you stab me? What if I'm already dead by the time he gets it? You won't be. Men like you die on their own terms. They don't weakly let their life slip away. Hush now. Kabadath is coming. So I want to talk... Talk, Jerry. Talk... Ju... What? Um, talk, oh, talk girl, maybe. Girl. Shivan, are you there? She's still here, but she can't answer you. She has nothing to do with this. Let her go. On the contrary, it's important that all three of us be here. It's part of the ritual. Talk to Zo. Chizo. Why are you summoning the tall man? What use could he be to you? You've been experiencing. You saw Kavadath's attempt to summon Chizo. He failed. He assumed our lord could be summoned with any old basic demon right. Chizo's far greater and more powerful. He's very nearly a god. Takes a great amount of magic and much more complex ritual to summon. We don't know it, but the tall man does. He will guide us and teach us. So, um, talk book. I call thee from the north. What does the prophecy say about me? Because his own prophecy the creation of John Defoe. When his body, mind, and soul are destroyed, the bridge will be created. It states he's supposed to guide the process. <coughs> we can expect inaccuracies in a prophecy. Um, uh, hang on a minute. Um, move. Move. I attempt to move when I make things worse. I feel stab of pain, something snapped behind my eyes. I fill my vision with spots. Punch, man. I was losing blood steadily, my arms and legs were limp and unresponsive, couldn't move. Kick, man. Losing blood, unresponsive, couldn't move. Look. Just look. Look, just press look, yep. Yeah. From my position I can only see a small portion of the cavern. I can see the idol on the stump and his waistcoat lying in the corner. Look cut. Presence of Savant. Coat. Strangely, my first thought was a vision of a pair and laundry bill. Look, man. Treacherous cultist was wandering around the stump in a manner I suppose was relevant to the ritual. Look, girl. <coughs> I could not see Siobhan, but I could hear her trying to moan through a gag. Now wait until you get a miss of the only thing keeping me alive was my stomach stuff of this. Pain was replaced with an ice cold numbness that was spreading fast. The room was swimming. Uh, 
uh, da, 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 call you from the west. Uh huh. So you wait for that thing, and then it says, "Wait till you." It's becoming hard to breathe. Air rattled in and out of my lungs like a buzzsaw. You eventually get the thing. The only thing keeping me alive was my stomach, and then you just press die. Yep. Matt, bring me to us. End it, Cavanagh. Blessed agonies. Body, mind, and soul. Vision. My stubborn wall, the only thing keeping me alive. Die. I died. Okay. So that's all it says. Presently with the guide, failing his duty for thee to judge. Yeah. Uh, it is, just that, is that, that the end of it? It just says, yeah, it says, that's and the that, end of uh, Yeah, and because I'm already dead, Kabarath will arrive and stab Lengman. I did die, didn't I? Yeah, I must have done. I can't type anymore. Die. It just says die. Uh, I think, okay. Yeah. It hurts. Ah, yes. What? He's dead? No, that's not possible. Master? Master, please, no! <coughs> and then, all of a sudden, I'm not dead. Because I can't be. I need to be alive to send the Defoe idol into space. Well, that's what I was wondering, you're like, wait, well. Go back, Trollby. You cannot rest yet. Rewind. Stay, Stay determined. determined. <coughs> Still work to be done. I figured it'd be something like that. Mm. I think that's about it. Yep, yeah, that is the end of this game. Trilby is alive again. Say something, Trilby. What? You're alive! I don't even know if I was doing it properly. <laughs> I didn't do it. You're alive! Where's Lenkman? Uh, he dead. Tallman took him. Did something horrible to him. <laughs> then he took him away. Where's my waistcoat? Um, don't talk, I've already called for an ambulance. <laughs> Where's my waistcoat? Wait. See that wooden idol? Yes. Bring it with us. Don't Wrap touch it tightly it. in clothes. I say, Bring it don't with touch us. It. Don't touch it and don't let blood get on it. And so it was that Trilby was in an ambulance with a topless Irish girl. And now it sits across from me. The idol. The reality shift had cleared up and we were free to leave. An STP cleanup crew arrived with the ambulance. No trace of Abed or the hotel staff was found. Officially, they've been classified as unexplained dis disappearances. Lengthen and the tall man seem to have also vanished, which doesn't surprise me at all. Siobhan signed the Official Secrets Act and is staying with her parents to recuperate. Which just leaves me to write up in my notes with the idol that haunts my dreams gazing at me from across my desk. Every instinct wants to burn it. But I don't. Lankman spoke of a prophecy that the destruction of John Defoe's soul would somehow help him in his order to summon their dark god. So if I destroy the idol, they win. But what else can I do? I certainly can't keep it. I know from experience that it breaks, it leaks malevolent will influence like a broken pipe leaks water. The only other option to hide it, but where? Well, it will never be found yeah, again by It did get destroyed in the. Um, ah. Hmm. I shall have to think about this. And as we know from seven days, the fulfillment of the prophecy continues. The ritual of the summoning of Chizo will go ahead. Events have been set in motion that cannot be stopped. I think that's dead Linkman. Now we must wait. Wait and prepare. Yep, and there's the tall man. 
At this time there came a man from the land of technology, and though his wisdom was great and his power advanced, he had the willfulness of his fellows, so, and so he was the arrogant man. And on the eight and twentieth day, the seventh month of the year of the arrogant man, the king gazed upon the land of technology and saw the arrogant man, who spake thus, O king, I beseech you, for this land has become corrupt without your benevolent hand, and all darkness seems to blah, 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 blah. <coughs> Make things right, power is great, and I have my power to control even one as you. And the king was rightly amused, for while the arrogant man's power was great, the king's was greater. The king said, get stuffed. My power is greater than yours. For, uh, secondly, while my capabilities are many, is it possible for me to enter the land of technology? I'll do this, for all the bigness of your head, you are still small enough to be spared the rigors of the ocean. I shall rescue you from the darkness, and you shall live in my house, and here you will learn humility. And the king said, So the arrogant man crossed the ocean, brought before his majesty. Now you must repay me for the, sl for the slight your arrogance caused me, for despite your insult, I love you. And you must learn to take this love. Yeah. And the king took the body and mind of the arrogant man, separated them from his soul, placed in a tree. Now you are the tree, the tree is you, the wood is your soul. Your body shall not wither or die. Bloody bloody blah. Yeah. Should any man interfere with the tree? This is your soul on that day is mine. I shall lend you the power to confront them and strike them down with vengeance. Uh, fill this heart with love. The arrogant man became the prince and he knew the name of the king. The prince and the court of the king bowed down and wept and sang with praise for the name of the king, for great and glory generous was his wisdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is basically the story of what happened to Cabadath. Yeah, Trilby's notes, credits, I assume. Conceived, written, designed, and programmed by Yahtzee. That's it, really. <laughs> <laughs> Something to be said for a nice short credits page. Soundtrack by this guy, who I've never heard of before. AGS engine by the guys who made the AGS engine. Yep. Yeah. One more to go. One more game to go, yeah. Playtesting by some random people. Web hosting. Whether it's still hosted by them, who knows. Special thanks to... PC Gamer UK, that's it, yeah. yeah. And everyone who demanded another Trilby game. <laughs> oh yeah, there's actually a, a fifth Trilby game. Oh, is there? Yeah, but it doesn't actually relate in plot to, to, to anything. Chisel. Yeah, it, it, it is Trilby before he encountered the Defoe problem. Ah. Oh. Back when he was actually a thief. It's Trilby and the art of theft. Ah, oh, fair enough. That sounds interesting. Anyway. Well, I've been Go Games. I'm Rewind. See you next time. Bye-bye.